Why I switched to Fujifilm and why you probably shouldn't. After years of using Sony, I finally made a switch to Fujifilm, but it's not for everyone. For some personal background, I started off with a Canon, just like almost everyone else. I forgot the model, I think it was a T2i, T3i. And then uh, years down the line, I made um, the switch to Sony because I wanted to start freelancing and content creation. So my first ever camera was an A6400. And then I had the kit lens with also, I bought a Sigma 16 millimeter uh, F1.4 or eight, that, that combo, right? So I had a Sony and then started doing freelance and then built it up to an A7 IV and ultimately ended up switching to Fujifilm around um, two to three months ago completely. So now I have my X-T5, my Fujifilm X-T5 and my XS20. So I wanted to discuss first initial impressions of Fujifilm and why I decided to switch to Fujifilm. So the reason why is because um, quite a few things. Um, first of all, it has on the physical aspect of it, um, there has a unique aesthetic. It's a retro style camera, which I do enjoy, especially the X-T5 uh, on this, with the silver colorway. I do enjoy having a good looking camera. So with the aesthetics of the camera in itself, it's an amazing camera. It's like so enjoyable to use and so enjoyable to just have. Because again, if you are going to buy a camera, you want, you want a camera that you do enjoy uh, looking at and because you're gonna use it more if you have a good looking camera. So just with the retro dials, spe specifically that one, it's very, it's very easy to just take out because I do enjoy having a good looking camera. Another thing that got me into the Fujifilm setup was the color science, as just like everyone would say, is the color science and how um, Fujifilm colors work. Because if a lot of you don't know that Fujifilm uh, was a film company that happened that happened to also make also um, cameras, so a lot of their color science is very very attractive to me. And because I do enjoy also shooting film, um, I do enjoy that certain part of having the Fujifilm lineup, specifically the film simulation. So that's what got me attracted to the Fujifilm brand, and in general just. Fujifilm cameras. Now, what were my expectations with switching to Fujifilm? Uh, initially, my expectations with switching to Fujifilm was that I was going to have more of a streamlined process of not having to edit a lot of my photos. Because to be honest, if I was going to edit them the same way anyways, why not just have it straight out of camera? So instead of me trying to make my, for example, my raw photos uh, come out looking like Fuji photos anyways. So why not just get a Fujifilm camera that shoots sh shoots it straight out of the camera and it looks already the way I want it to look. Because I was, I ended up just trying to edit like these photos that I took on my Sony to look like a Fuji camera. Um, specifically the film simulations like Portra or um, um, Kodak Gold. And then ultimately leading to another point is that I ended up just shooting film. Um, because again, at the end of the day, um, if you shoot it film, it's going to look like film. Um, but sometimes you do, it does get expensive, which is why I also chose Fujifilm because my expectation was because it does shoot it like film has, has the film simulations. I can save quite a bit of money and just shoot the, the, the film photos that I have. I mean, the film camera that I have with more creative projects is more important projects. So that, that was my expectations with grabbing the Fujifilm um, camera and lineup and just in general. One of the other expectations I had was that I thought that it would really change my workflow with regards to that part, but it did change it to a degree, but it also added a little bit of problems that I wanted to talk about and why I think um, some people shouldn't switch to Fuji if they are, for example, coming from Sony. Because again, not every camera is perfect. Every camera in its own and every camera brand has its own pros and cons. Now, what are the cons? Now, even though Fujifilm has a great body and a nice design, it doesn't mean that it doesn't come with its quirks or its cons. Having a design like this, it can get a little bit confusing for people who are switching from Sony since uh, because it has the retro dials, it's a bit more complicated to use versus if you were using uh, more of a creator camera right now these days because they, those are um, pretty much simpler. So it does get a bit complicated and there is a steep learning curve when you switch to Fuji 
which we'll get into more. So having that as a problem makes it a little bit more difficult for people who are trying to get more output done. So that's one of the problems I've noticed when I switched to Fuji was that there was a learning curve that I had to take like a, like a very, um, like a harder learning curve versus when I started off with the Sony. Cause when I was navigating, especially the menu for the Fuji, Sony menu was already bad in itself. The Fuji film happened to be worse in terms of the UI or the user interface. So having to uh, navigate this was a bit difficult. Um, it took me quite a bit of um, tutorial videos and YouTube videos in order to figure out, oh, so this is what my Fujifilm is capable of. Now coming into another uh, point of contention is that the lens ecosystem for the Fuji, for the native Fujifilm brand is a bit expensive. Noticed how expensive it is for the kind of glass you get and the kind of quality. So that's a bit of a con that you have to take into consideration is that when you are switching from Sony to Fuji is that um, the lens isn't as cheap as you think it might be. It's actually pretty expensive, but there are workarounds to this. Specifically, I got Sigma. And then if I had a choice to rebuy again, like I have the 16 to 55 F 2.8 Fuji lens that I got used. But if I had to redo it again, I would just get the 16 to 50 Sigma or maybe a Tamron. Yeah, because it's just, it's just a little bit pricier um, compared to Sony where with Sony, I think you with the amount of people selling it used and just like your options in general, it's a bit cheaper except for the G Master line, but then you can get those again for use. And if you can't really justify the Fujifilm uh, prices for the lens, then Sigma's here. So I have the 10 to 18 and I have a video on this lens already on the channel. You can go check that out. Another con that I wanted to talk about and is everyone's on, on everyone's mind is the autofocus. To be honest, uh, the autofocus does suck, but it really depends on the kind of um, uh, creator you are or the kind of freelancer you are. And we'll talk about that even more. The Fujifilm autofocus does suck because unfortunately I was coming from Sony, which arguably you, you have one of the best autofocusing systems in the Sony, especially with their AI and how they do things. It's really amazing and it's really hard to miss focus with the Sony, with my Sony cameras. Um, but with Fujifilm, unfortunately I've had experiences where I've already missed focus. But part of it was also because of how confusing the user interface system is with the the, the Fujifilm uh, cameras. Some of it was just due to settings, but some of it was actually just misfocusing and it wasn't like focusing on my uh, face. So unfortunately, if you are someone who is a professional, then uh, missing focus is not really an option that you should have or sh you should uh, even entertain to be honest. That's where I see um, sometimes because I am a creator, I can just redo a lot of these uh, shots. But then if I were to be doing professional work, um, like for example, if I was freelancing again, um, I would I would definitely grab a Sony camera to do it and then just like adjust because I don't want to have to think about that while shooting some like shooting a creative project because shooting a creative project on its own is already stressful. Imagine having to stress about the focusing system. So who is Fujifilm not for? For me, Fujifilm is not for people who really need the best autofocusing system that they can get or vloggers who really need it to be in focus. So what I do personally, and I do this even with Sony is that I keep it at F around F 5.6 and to F 5 point, I mean, F 8, F F9 when I'm shooting anything with regards to the log or the vlog that I have in this channel. And it's just a personal stylistic choice. I don't like having too much of a wide aperture anyways, even with Sony. But that's a way you can combat that autofocusing problem is that having it at a mid to lower aperture. But yeah, so that's just how I went about it. And if you are not, and if you need the bokeh, then maybe you should consider something else, maybe like a Sony. So that's who it's not for. And Fujifilm isn't really for people who, or creators who want like simple menus. The menu system for a lot of the cameras aren't simple, but the Fujifilm, I don't know how they did it to make it a little bit more complicated than, than usual, but there is a bit of the learning curve there. But despite the challenges, I do prioritize having a more streamlined workflow. And that's just my creative decision on its own. I do enjoy having the film simulations and those to me are a bit more valuable than the autofocus. Like it sounds kind of stupid if you think about it, like if the video isn't in focus, then it doesn't matter. But it's not a thing that occurs quite often because I did the thing, like I did um, 
shoot a lot of my videos the way I want them to and the way they, they can focus easier. But again, if you are a beginner creator or you're just looking to um, get the job done, then most likely you would want to uh, not grab a Fuji. It does work for me. I just also love the look of the cameras like I talked about and just the workflow of it. It's just having JPEGs and just the, it's already baked in. It's an amazing workflow for me and it just makes it way, way easier. Now, who is the Fujifilm for? It's for people who do love that creative aspect to it, the color, the color science, as corny as a lot of people would make it out to be. Um, also the community. I feel like there's a, there's a bit of a community aspect to having the Fujifilm uh, because a lot of people do like to share recipes and it's just a whole community in its own that I, I would say one of the winning factors on why I like Fujifilm is because of how open people are about their um, their recipes and all this. So that's one factor. And then I don't think you can get that from Sony, to be honest, right? That's one thing as well that if you are considering um, getting a Fuji then that one that community aspect is part of it for me the switch to Fujifilm has been great but make sure it's right for you and I've been actually considering and just like reflecting upon my decision on like switching full on to Fujifilm and one of the things that I've been considering is actually getting another like another Sony it's like having the Fujifilm as my main and just having another Sony. One camera I've been considering is because I do like the retro aspect again, and the retro design is the A7C II Mark II. The reason why I wanted to switch full on to Fuji was just because I wanted to make it a bit more like a minimal, like kind of um, workflow. But now it's like, yeah, I, I can grab a, a Sony just so I can have fun with it, you know, or something else. But that's one of my considerations I've had for 2020 coming into 2025. I'm going to make a camera gear I'm looking to buy in 2025. And the Sony a7C II is probably is going to be probably part of that list because I'm heavily considering it. So I switched full time to Fuji, but I'm not again opposed to having a Sony again. Yeah, if you have suggestions on what should I pair that A7C2 with? Just let me know in the comments down below. And if you're looking for another video to watch about uh, Fujifilm, uh, check out this video.